This DVD training program explains the important workmanship standards for evaluating surface mount solder joints. The contents are organized into four sections. An introduction, which is common to both class two and three training. Dimensional criteria, specific to class two and class three products. And visual defect criteria, common to both class two and three. This introduction will explain surface mount termination styles, industry specifications for solder joint acceptance standards, classes of products, and solder joint terminology. Let's start by describing an acceptable solder joint. We'll be specifying minimum and maximum dimensions for all the various sizes and shapes of the solder fillet. Solder joints that fall outside of these limits will be considered a defect. We'll be discussing what that means in a moment. We'll also be showing the target or ideal condition for each type of solder joint. Although it's desirable to have nothing but perfect solder joints for every lead or termination, we all know that there are a multitude of factors that can affect the soldering process. For example, environmental conditions of the soldering area or contamination of the solder or component leads can result in a less than perfect solder joint. The side joint length of the J-lead solder joint at its narrowest point should be a minimum of one and one-half times the width of the lead. Let's look at gull wing side joint length. Now that you've been introduced to the concept of acceptance requirements, product classes, and soldering terminology, let's examine the acceptance criteria for class three through-hole solder joints. The following examples will show the minimum and maximum acceptable dimensional and visual requirements for the three perspectives of a through-hole solder joint. The component side, the plated through-hole or barrel, and the solder side. Let's start by looking at the component side. The first parameter we'll examine is land coverage. The target solder connection will have a properly wetted fillet that covers 100% of the land and feathers out to a thin edge over the land area. It is allowable to have 0% land coverage on the component side as long as all other minimum solder coverage requirements are met on the barrel and solder side of the connection. The other parameter for the component side of the solder joint has to do with excess solder. The maximum acceptable condition allows the solder to extend up into the lead bend area as long as it doesn't contact the component body. Here's what it looks like when the solder actually touches the component. Now let's examine the acceptance requirements for the barrel of the solder joint. The first requirement we'll examine is the vertical fill of solder inside the plated through hole. To evaluate this condition, you must look at the solder joint from both the component and the solder sides. While we've seen that the ideal or target connection has a slightly concave, cone-shaped fillet that rises from the outer edge of the land to the component lead, the solder joints you see every day may not always live up to this ideal. One common variation of the fillet's shape is a slight dip into the through hole before the fillet rises onto the lead. This condition is especially common on the component side of the board as gravity can cause the solder to sag slightly into the hole as it solidifies. As long as the solder joint meets all the other requirements for acceptance, some amount of solder depression is allowed. A maximum total of 25% solder depression on either the component or solder side is permitted. This means that a minimum of three quarters of the barrel must be filled with solder. The other parameter for the barrel portion of the solder joint is the wetting of the lead and barrel. Circumferential wetting defines how far around the lead and barrel wall the solder wets or bonds properly. The minimum requirement calls for three quarters or 270 degrees of circumferential wetting present on the component side of the lead and barrel. Next, let's turn to the solder side of the connection. There are three acceptable criteria. The first is the wetting of the lead, land, and barrel. 
The minimum acceptable solder joint should have a concave fillet with proper wetting for 330 degrees or approximately 90% of the way around the circumference of the lead and barrel and a minimum of 270 degrees or three quarters circumferential wetting over the land. The second requirement for the solder side is contact angle. The ideal solder fillet will form a contact angle of 90 degrees or less. A contact angle of greater than 90 degrees is acceptable when the cause is the quantity of solder extending over the land. The solder joint is considered rejectable when the fillet is convex and the contact angle is greater than 90 degrees, but solder does not extend over the land. Another rejectable condition is when the solder clumps on the surface of the connection. Notice there is no feathered edge apparent and the contact angle is irregular. Our last parameter for the solder side is lead visibility. The minimum requirement occurs when the fillet is slightly convex with good wetting and the lead is not visible due to excess solder. You need to make sure you can see the lead in the barrel from the component side of the connection. This condition is called a process indicator, meaning the cause of the condition should be corrected in the soldering process.